Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. It's time for the weekly challenges and you can earn up to 123 atoms this week as well as the quick fix dagger. Let's see how everything is done. Well, it's a new week and we've got new weekly challenges to complete. As in the past weeks, we don't have the workshop anymore. We have, however, some easy tasks that can be accomplished very, very easily. But the survival one, for instance, is quite bothersome and time consuming to do. I really didn't want to do it because it took me over two hours, but I eventually ended up doing it for the dagger, which is quite decent. It's a junky dagger, three stars. I will show you at the very end. But for now, let's start with the easiest weekly challenge, in my opinion. I did it without even noticing, which is basically completing events during night time. Then I'm going to show you how to do other four and there is one that you can't finish because it's bugged. Yeah, no big surprise there. It seems to be a trend in the past weeks. Maybe you have already done this one and you get 33 atoms for completing five quests of your choice. It just has to be during night time. So make sure that it's dark, you can see the stars and that's all really. Then just go ahead and do some events. In this case, I did a Scorch Earth event. I died too and got bugged, but that's another story. It doesn't matter here because I finished the event and it did count. Then I did one Feed the People event as well. For the meat cats, they are useful. You get 5% experience so whenever I see it live. I usually go there to get the rewards. I also did Iranian Fever for the legendaries. It's amazing script material. And randomly I did this one. It's a census of violence. It is very easy to do. You just have to defend the robot against some waves, normally rats or scorched. And then I finish up with uh, one violent night event, again for legendaries that you can script. And that's how I finished my challenge. The next one might be easier or difficult depending on the service that you wind up. You need to acquire raw flux from two different areas. For this, you should go to the Scorch Earth event nuked area. There are four types of flux there, but there is one that you can't really find here. I'm telling you this because usually people launch a nuke to do Scorch Earth. So that's the nuked area that you will find the most without launching a nuke yourself. And that's what I did. I got the crimson, the fluorescent, the yellow and the violet flux in here. You just have to look around, especially around the forest area in here. And you should have no issues finding the four types. Now for cobalt, it doesn't really exist here. So you will need to go to any other areas in the map. I prefer to go to White Springs. It's rich in cobalt as well as in the other four fluxes. So if you find a nuked area in White Springs, go there right away for this challenge. You can find all the flux you need in one single place. But again, it's not so easy to find a nuked area in White Springs. The most common is around the Scorch Beast Queen, the Prime Fisher. So yeah, I finished my challenge here at White Springs, where I found cobalt in the trees. Of course, if you find it somewhere else, you might want to check it out as well. Now, camera challenges are usually quite time consuming, but for this week, it's not that much. Actually, I found this challenge the second easiest of them all because they give you a large group of creatures to photograph. Of course, you still have to fulfill the entire list, but there are a lot of choices and sometimes you can choose a creature that will fulfill two or three requirements at once, just like here with the gulpers. It is a glowing creature and it's also an aquatic creature, so two in one. 
Next, I went to the Excelsior's model home because I can usually find Merlux here as well as some Scorch, which I kinda did. You can also find other things sometimes like anglers or even gulpers. It's worth checking if you start at a gulpers lagoon, which was my case. Then all you have to do is photograph the two creatures and there you go. I got three points in one single location. Amazing. Fantastic. Marvelous. Alright, jokes aside, I went to Dolly Star's wilderness trying to find bugs because usually you can find the blood flies or even blood bugs in here. I found the first one, so just took a picture and ready for the next one. Which ended up being the White Spring service entrance because you can find a fixed spot here for rabbits. If you don't find a rabbit here, you can always check the White Spring buildings because there is a spot for squirrels. Just a tip to easily do the animal line. Finally, I finished off with free range because you can't find a cryptid which is also legendary. Yes, the legendary sheep squatch from the event. If you want to find it elsewhere, you can always try random event spawns. Sometimes you are lucky enough to find one outside of this event. However, I think it's much easier and quicker to find the legendary sheep squatch through free range. Let's move on to the bothersome waters. Deal critical hits to enemies, you will get 30 free atoms for dealing 25 critical hits to any enemy in Appalachia. I started here at Morgantown because it's filled with low-level ghouls, which should make it easier, but it didn't go so well. I mean, at least you don't get damage, that's the plus side, but they die very easily and it takes around two of them to fill up the crit bar, sometimes even three, which means you need three, four enemies for one crit. Yeah, that's a lot of enemies as you need. So, after clearing the entire town, I decided to move on to Charleston Capital Building because they have worked it and now it has a lot of ghouls. I mean, even before with the super mutants, it would work as well. I just need to go to a place with a lot of enemies. And again, things worked just okay. I started doing the same thing. Don't forget, you have to hit the VAT button to select. And when the bar is full, you need to press space. Well, on computer, on PC, the default key is space to launch your critical hit. So that, you need stamina, and then when you're ready for it, space for the critical hit. It takes a little bit, it can be dangerous if you are tanking many enemies at once, be careful not to die. But it's the only way to do this quickly, you know? If you go to a location with three enemies, and then again and again, you're gonna take forever, you're gonna spend a lot of caps, and that's a waste of resources. So just choose a location with a lot of enemies, and just do this. Take one at a time, run back, go forward, use team packs if necessary, right away if you're fighting ghouls and they give you lots of rads, and that should be enough. Then I went to West Tech, obviously. It's not an easy place, but it works, especially because you can target and do several hits in one single target. It saves you time, but you need to manage your HP very well here because they do tons of damage when you are kind of standing still and trying to VATS hit people, especially if you are melee build like me. That's not really great to do this challenge, but I'm showing you one of the most difficult scenarios, so if you have a ranged weapon, this should be much easier for you to do. This is pretty much hit and repeat, and I ended up inside of West Tech with my 25 hits, and with that I got my free 30 atoms. Well, there is another challenge, and it should be worth 30 free atoms, but it is currently bugged, because it is about Vault 94 and Bethesda switched the missions. It says dead in the water, but this week is time for the third mission, Wash Out. I have actually completed it in Novice and then in Standard with the team, 
and it didn't count towards the progress. So I'm pretty sure that it is bugged. Of course, you can work towards other requests, but you need to finish five and there is only three that you can do without this part, which means it's bugged and you cannot finish the weekly challenge. Well, the first three points are completely bugged and there's nothing we can do about it. Are you prepared for the survival mode? Survive! You need to complete five subtasks about gathering stuff. And it took me over two hours to finish this and get the quick fix. I can say it was worth it. Well, I started here at this farm in the very north of the map because you need to gather veggies. Yep. Not every plant will count, flowers don't count. Basically, you need to gather veggies in farms. If you have some at your base, be my guest, do it, it's quicker. But we need 50 gatherings, that means we need way more than just one farm. I went to Aaron's homestead here in the very north as well, it's not too far off from the other. And there are tons of corn and tomatoes and even cranberries to gather as well as rasin grain. So it should be pretty much done with these two farms. If you're not done, just server jump or head to another farm and that should be it for your first soup task. Next, I picked on the easiest one, I think, which is basically collecting dirty water. It will give you a lot of rats since we need tons of water. But if you have a decontamination shower or rather ways with you, this should be fairly easy to do. Just spawn the gathering button and when you're done, drop all the water that you got so you don't get over encumbered. Now we have to eat 50 raw meat. How to do this? I went to running fever in survival mode, but you don't exactly have to do it in survival. And kill all the small rats to get the glowing meat, because there are waves and more waves coming in this event. It's a very quick way to get tons of raw meat. And of course, don't forget to eat them later. The whole point is to eat raw meat in survival mode. So feel free to gather all the raw meat you want in adventure, then jump into survival and eat it up. Eat all of it. Don't forget you will also get radiation and probably diseases. But that's what the game wants you to do. Then I went to Swarm of Suitors because it's also an event with waves. A very easy one to do. Killing low level Merlurks. And again, collect all the meat they drop and then eat everything at once and hope that your game won't crash. Just like it happened to me. Eating and drinking is dangerous in Fallout 76. I hope it is not dangerous for you, but it is for me, sadly, most of the time. Finally, we have two more points to do. I will start with the first one to craft healing solves in the Savage Divide. I have several recipes, but this seems to be the easiest one for me. We need to get resin, glowing resin, as well as wood. So if you see any wood around, make sure to collect it, because we need a lot of it, like... Tons of it. I spent over one hour collecting wood actually. But in here we want these glowing firecracker berries as well as glowing resin. Around the mountain cabins there is a very rich source of both things. Just look around and you will find the berries glowing red. They are very easy to spot. And the resin is also not difficult. They are kind of glowing orange yellowish. So, if we are playing during the night especially, they are very visible from afar. Then just head to a chemistry bench and you can equip your super duper for more results. And even chemist as well. But you need to do 20 crafts, so it doesn't really matter if you get more from the perks, it will not count. The real horror is about to hit you. Start at Sylvie and Sun's logging camp because this is an excellent source of wood. It's perfect, there is at least a hundred wood in here. If you equip the wood perk, you will get more, but in this case, it doesn't matter how much wood you get because it counts one gathering equals one point. I know, even more bothersome. As I mentioned earlier, I spent over one hour collecting wood. 
fun experience. Wow, such wow. Then I went to the next logging camp near Vault 96, where most of the wood is in form of logs just around the logging camp itself. The town of Helvetia is also a decent source of wood. You'll find lots of piles in this yellow restaurant house sort of thing. Make sure to collect everything, even the hidden ones that are at the bottom. And there are a few more logs around the town, so make sure to pick them up as well. Then head to the Torn, and we're going to start the long grinding in the Watauga and the Cranberry Bog region. I had no idea that these two regions had that much wood until yesterday. So basically we'll find tons of piles just like this one across the entire place. Especially around the ranger's office, there are like barricades and piles and logs and like mountains of logs. I don't know, just look around, look at the floor jump to get a better view at a distance and you will find a lot of wood. I got about 150 gatherings just in this place. I'm not kidding. Of course you will have to go around, run a lot, gather a lot, that takes time, but it is possible and yeah I think it's probably the quickest way to do this since you cannot serve a jump to gather the same wood in the same locations that I have shown you previously. Yep, they have a 24 hours respawn rate. So if you want to do this in one single day, if you don't want to wait at all, just head to the Cranberry Bog and start collecting as much wood as you can. There is plenty around, you just need to look at the right places. Keep in mind that the Watauga area itself has a lot of wood in the surroundings, especially in the south and in the east parts. Time for the big reveal. What is the quick fix? It is a 3 stars legendary dagger, one hand weapon, and it is basically a junkie's weapon. It has the more damage, the more your withdrawal effects, and has one endurance plus 40% a faster swing speed. It's basically a perfect weapon right now with the current junkie meta. Now I have done a quick test in here in comparison to my bloody dagger and the quick fix to see how better or worse it is, but I only have one addiction so this is not the perfect test. At least I have the dagger perks from one hand in strength, I have bloody mess and I also have adrenaline so that's a plus. But as you can see, you can kill things very easily with this junkies, the quick fix weapon. I believe that with more addictions, this will be stronger than the bloodied one. Because the difference is not that big right now. And even in cooperation with my executor's dagger, it is much better. So this challenge was a real pain in the ass to complete. But at the end of the day, maybe it was worth it. I think I got myself a new dagger. And if I decide to get more addictions, I think I won't even need my other one hand melee weapons, including the bloodied ones. If you have a melee build and you really like one hand weapons, then maybe it's worth taking a few hours to complete this weekly challenge and get your quick fix. Because this might just be your new one hand weapon just like it was for me. Well, apart from the survival mode challenge, things were pretty accessible and easy to do. I hope this video was helpful to you in any way and that it could speed up your weekly challenges in any way possible. I'm Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, I do weekly challenge guides almost every single week. I also do the survival mode challenges and I showcase the weapon and provide a little testing, nothing too serious, but just to give you a small hint on what to expect. So feel free to subscribe to my channel, click on the bottom below. I also have a Patreon page for those who would like to support me even further. That's going to be everything for today's video. Thank you for watching and I will see you very, very soon. Adios. Bye bye.